This, this is the ABQ Business Podcast with your host, Jason Rigby. Each week, we'll interview visionary business leaders to inspire the creative power and spirit that's in every entrepreneur. Discussing strengths, weaknesses, strategies, systems, and the problems we can all solve together for a new future for local small business. Hi, and welcome to the Albuquerque Business Podcast. This is Jason Rigby. I've got a return guest today. Uh, Amanda, how are you? I am so good. I'm excited to see you again. Good to be back. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And you are from, we were talking earlier, uh, you're from Socorro. I'm from Socorro, New Mexico. Little jewel right in the middle of the state. (laughs) I think I've been there. What's near there that you go through? So that's like a touristy thing. Um, Bosque del Apache is near there. Yeah, uh, Al Bar, Buckhorn Burger, best green chili <laughs> cheeseburgers. I didn't go there. You got to go there. To, yeah, that sounds interesting. And then um, your last name is Amanda Gerard, Gerard, like the street. I learned that. Yes, you say it like the street. <laughs> and you're not from here, so that's okay. We got it now. <laughs> and then you work at UNM. I do. I work at the University of New Mexico in UNM Food. I'm the operations manager and manage the contract for our food service. But the cool thing that I wanted to bring you back was you impressed me. I, I told somebody when we, were, when we did the interview last time, I was like, she was way better than I was. I was like, because the way that you um, know customer experience, customer service um, was amazing to me. And then the amount of knowledge that you were dropping, I was like, and I encourage people to go back. This is going to kind of be a continuation. It is. We're going to get a little bit more deeper into it. Yeah, we're going to we're going to go from there. I think we got to touch on a lot of really cool topics. And I I like to sum up what I love and what I'm passionate about in hospitality as a that I am a curator of guest experiences. So like a curator of guest experiences, what does the curator word mean? That means that it is not an, a Keurig, but. <laughs> not a Keurig. No, I might be a Keurig too. I love coffee. Um, no, a curator of guest experiences is that I am intentionally trying to create an experience that is important and significant and special to every single guest that we contact. So I want to get into that because a lot of people don't, I don't want people to tune us out right now. There was a study that I just read because I want to hit people with the impact of this, how important this conversation we're going to have today is. They said that companies are getting up to 70% return on ROI just off of, you know, going through and making sure that their systems are in place for customer experience. And they said it is the most, I have the study right here. They said it is the most exciting opportunity for businesses in 2020. Um, Think about that. If you can, and this is what I liked about, they said, not only will you get higher profits, but you're going to reduce churn and increase revenues. Exactly. And you're going to get that big, big bonus, which is those unrealized dollars of retention. So when we get people to come back, that's where we really are able to grow our business. Like we touched on last time, we can get people through the door, but they have to come back in order for you to experience growth. So when we talk about that guest experience and how important it is in terms of ROI, it's the only thing that's really going to set you apart from your competitor. Odds are you are not going to to make the world's best sandwich or give the world's best teeth cleaning. It's the way that you treat people when they come into your office or your business that makes them feel like, I want to patronize this business again. I'm a loyal customer. Yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. I was listening to a podcast of the day. I, know, I probably won't pronounce his last name <laughs> right, but it's, he is Italian name, Dean Grazzoli or something like that. But he was talking about, he was in Scottsdale and he went to a little diner and Cisco was delivering eggs to the diner, you know, and just, you know, how Cisco's yeah. for all you guys know, that's the big company that delivers all yes. the produce and all that stuff. Um, they probably do a ton of stuff that I don't know. You probably know more about them than I do. But. Oh yeah. Cisco has all the things, but they're, they're a, a large company that delivers to restaurants and, but they were, he was delivering and he's like, I can go into this diner and get these eggs from Cisco, you know, for dollar 99 is their price. And he goes, I go to, I went to a resort in Scottsdale and saw that same Cisco truck delivering eggs in the back, but they're going to charge me $20. Same egg. Yep. So it becomes not about the egg. Nope. It's so relative to what market what you, that you're in and what level of service you're providing. So it's, that's where it's going to fall on the spectrum of difference there. So like one of the things that as a business owner, and I, and I don't want to get just into small businesses because I think this is pertinent to every business that's out there, whether it's large, medium, you, you just have to move. I think a small business can move a little bit quicker on this. 
you know, than a large business. But like, if we get into knowing and understanding the ROI is out there for yes. tre- and customers are expecting, you know, 10 times more than they've ever expected. And that's why it has so much upside. And that's why they're talking about it as a huge point of ROI. And the best thing you can do for your business in 2020 is because people care now more than ever. It used to be enough to have coffee poured in the cup and now we need fanfare with it for it to be important. (laughs) That's, That's how we're making connections with these companies, be them huge corporations or your local, you know, coffee brewer you well, you've really got starbucks. i do have a and, but starbucks. you got one of the uh i should have had this i wouldn't be the citrus defender I be, yeah i would yes. not be sick right now if i'd had the starbucks citrus but you said locally um well, who's the other company? satellite satellite has a similar drink called the doctor so it's all about you know this one happened to be near me but when i'm on campus in the student union building i go up there and i get the doctor and for them they have a little bit of you know it used to be a secret menu item right. so they've added that element of excitement that makes you feel mm. like i have a cool experience happening so so they they can prevent people from being sick but yet it's a secret menu that sounds <laughs> horrific <laughs> no but it's I mean, not anymore now I mean, they have it's signage. something that they've created It's tea, basically, right? Right. Yeah. So I was a coffee person. They introduced a new and exciting menu item, and it took me into a new product line that I was excited about. And that's the deal is we got to stay up with trends. We have to keep evolving that customer experience. And that's why right now you, you were mentioning those statistics of, you know, that percentage of people saying, yeah, my experience was fine. And the business thinks, man, we really knocked it out of the park. Right. Yeah, exactly. One of the things was, um, that I saw in here that I think was probably the biggest as far as them all was like companies, 80% of companies were saying they were doing a great job with customer experience. But when they were polling, they pulled over 10,000 companies here in the United States. And they said that it was eight to 10% customers were actually saying that they were getting a relevant experience. Exactly. So we're giving ourselves a lot of back path, paths instead of um, evaluating what we can do better. And that's really what I want to talk to you about today is how do we evolve that interaction from something that is forgettable to something that is remarkable because remarkable is the thing that's going to make your customer excited about coming back. And w- why is it important that I mean, yeah, maybe you have the best green chili in Albuquerque, whatever, but why is it important to make them excited? Because eventually we're all conditioned to accept the experience. So we might know that consistently I can go to, you know, Starbucks. Let's use that because I have this cup sitting next to me. I can go to Starbucks. I understand what that experience is like and I know what to expect. But if you notice, they'll roll out different reward systems. Mm -hmm. They will introduce new products because you need more wow moments. And they understand that if they are not always dangling the carrot to make you excited about visiting, it's not enough to be consistent. You need to be exceptional. Right. And, And I think that word exceptional we don't take the time as business owners or CEOs to look at and say from beginning to end. And I know you had talked about a book that you read that was just absolutely. I I believe that this book can change your business the moment you finish it. I love it when, uh, when people bring in books, we need it. You know, it's always be humble enough to know that you're not the smartest person in the room. Mm. And I know I am not. And I, I have the privilege of learning from people in the industry who are outstanding and are really amazing professionals. But there's a wealth of information out there. Get an audio book, listen right. to it in your car, but get yourself some knowledge. Understand that the, the things that you don't know are the things that are hurting you. So um, the book that I really want everyone to go out there and pick up so you can reference it and change your business immediately is The Power of Moments. And that is by Chip and Dan Heath. So The Power of Moments. So everybody can hop on Amazon right now. Yes, right now. Do it. (laughs) Um, And you'll see on the on the cover, it's a jar and there's lightning in it. You know why? Because we're trying to capture lightning in a bottle. And the, the premise of the book and the reason that it is imperative for business owners um, or corporations is that moments are what people are saying 
are the reason why they're patronizing a business. It's the reason why they're staying in relationships. It's the reason, you know, why we find purpose in our life is because of these moments, defining moments. So we as business people need to understand that we are the makers of moments. Mm, That's so good. They don't just happen. You've got to go out there and create this moment. And you have to think about what does that moment look like and why is it important to my customer? Yeah, I mean, think about that like a moment, like because I I know whether you like when, instantly when you thought about it, whether you're spiritual or not, or you've been to church or whatever. But you can go to church and somebody's getting you know baptized, or maybe mm-hmm. you're taking your baby and getting baptized, whatever. Yep, that's that's a moment, whether you believe in that or not. You know, when when whether you're an adult and you're getting baptized, or whether you're a child, you're creating this forever moment that these people, these family members, are going to see. Exactly. And remember, and exactly. and that's something that becomes intangible. And it's the thing that makes people feel personally connected. And that's what we need. We need that personal connection. That's why people are falling a little dissatisfied. They're like, yes, I got my product. Yes, it was fine. Yes, people were nice. I didn't have an impactful interaction that made me feel connected to that experience. Mm, that's so good. Yeah. And, the, and going back to what you said about the baptism, that's so important. Weddings, funerals, baptisms, birthdays, Every single one of those occasions, here's what I need you to really think about, and and this should inspire you. Somebody made that up. Mm -hmm. That's not a natural thing. Mm -hmm. We made this up. Someone made that moment, and now an entire civilization has adapted to it and made it special too. Right. So know that you have that power in your business. Know that you can make moments for your guests, for your customers, for your clients that make them just feel like this was a remarkable experience and I will always remember it. And I wonder like, I mean, how, how, what, when you use the word remarkable, could give me like an example, what would that look like? So, so again, referring to this book, it does say that there's a little bit of a formula. What does make a remarkable mo- moment, um, a defining moment? And it needs something from this list of ingredients. It needs elevation. So it's got to be made important. So something like a graduation, right? That right. has elevation in it. It needs pride. So if you downloaded the Couch to 5K app and then you were able to do the 5K, that has a pride um, yeah, and component. You're gonna be, yeah, the, by finishing that and following yes. through that, you're going to be loyal to that app. Exactly. You're going to feel really excited about it. Um, insight. So some profound moment of understanding or truth, like maybe from a documentary. Um, And then the last one is connection. So feeling like you were bonded to another person through this experience, that makes a defining moment too. So if we can use this list of ingredients and say, how do we elevate? How do we inspire pride? How do we offer insight? And how do we provide connection? Now, one of those things, great. Two of them, awesome. As many as you can incorporate into your service, then that's when people are really going to feel those moments. Yeah, and, and I'm trying to think of it like on a practical level. Sure. Like uh, if you're a business owner and you're sitting there, you're saying, this is all great, but you know, I'm coming in working 12, 15 hour days, yep. six days a week. I don't have time to do this and I can't, you know, hire somebody that's going to be a, you know, CX customer experience. You know, I'm not at that level yet. I mean, there right. may be companies that are listening that are there, but what are some of the things, how, well, like, how would you start out like real practical? Like what's the first steps? Like so, first step. Let's well, say. let me, I'll tell you a little tale of, of a hotel in California. And this was an example offered in, in the power of moments. And I think that because I had that same feeling, Jason, I'm like, this is awesome. I don't know what to do for people though, to really give them the moment. And they use this example of a hotel and it is called the magic the Magic Palace, I believe. And <laughs> that it sounds kind of sketchy. It actually. does sound kind of sketchy, doesn't it? But I'd be like, who's read of this? <laughs> but if you went on Yelp during the time that this book was published, it was higher rated than Four Seasons. It was coming wow. in better than Ritz Carlton. And it's like, why? You know, it's a canary yellow building. It's mm. kind of shabby. It's clean, but, right. you know, it's not updated. It's not fancy. But what they did is they really invested in the moments. So when you were down at the pool, 
your child or or you if you felt like it, but they could walk over to this red phone that was hanging on the wall. And whenever you picked up the phone, somebody on the other end said, Popsicle hotline, how may I help you? Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And so in this hotel, a white gloved butler would come and on a silver tray present you or your child with a popsicle of your choice. And what's the cost of that? Nothing. I yeah. mean, it's so minuscule. Mm-hmm. But when we are on the daily grind or when your business is new, you start sweating about, now you want me to pay a guy to come and hand out free popsicles? Right, right. This makes no sense, but it does. So you've got to figure out how to how to collect that data. And if you go to these Yelp reviews, you know, you'll see people are so uh, connected and they feel like, wow, I had the most amazing experience. They offered free laundry service and it would come back up to your room folded with a piece of lavender in it. These things cost money, but they make more money. Right. Because but I, I wouldn't think like, I mean, what's a, how much is a popsicle? Exactly. And if you already have people that are there doing like whether you have you know, um, housekeepers or people at the front desk. How, how long does it take to grab a popsicle out of the freezer, put it on a silver tray with a white towel and gloves or whatever, put some gloves on and then walk out to the pool real quick? Exactly. So, I mean, I don't, I don't see that as like being a huge expense. No, but we do get, we get a little mired down in, in um, the, the line item. You know, we're like, okay, now add popsicles. Now add Joe who's going to take the popsicles. Right. But the fact is, is that for that very small budget, you could probably invest in some popsicles and be fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and then teach your staff to multitask. Empower them. Tell the person that is really amazing and front facing, I want you to own this moment for our guests. Mm, I love that. You yeah. know, Know, be out there and be you get to deliver a memory you're mm-hmm. delivering a smile and that should be exciting and you know being from hospitality that's where i say you have to have that heart of service that has to get you so excited or this is not for you but i promise you there is someone in your company who would be incredibly excited to be the front man of moments oh yes of course yeah because there's something that an employee feels when they create that moment it's it's amazing. You are a part of that person's memory. If you give someone the best birthday restaurant experience of their life, Mm, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. If someone proposes and they're, you know, at your table, it's an amazing feeling because Mm -hmm. you're part of that moment. So when you are able to own that and whenever you as, you know, business owner, CEO, wherever you're at, when you are able to say that that matters, you right. have to place the importance on delivering those moments and your staff will be invested in it too. Well, I think just on loyalty all around, not only on the customer, but the employee side, you're going to have less turnover. Exactly. You know, because if, if you're empowering your employees to create moments, mm-hmm. they're going to feel good when they come to work. Exactly. And then customers are going to have this amazing experience with this with these moments that you're generating right that so i think all around that's that how much money is that saving you exactly turnover is hugely expensive well, of course, yeah. if you can find a way to retain someone and what do we know about our employees we know that our employees would love to make more money sure we got that right but we know that they want to be respected and we know that they want praise mm. so we're now we have the opportunity to respect and praise them for doing something really exciting for our business but our customers Customers also are going to be overjoyed. I think that we really underestimate that we can bring joy to our customers and have them express it back to us. Yeah, I love that. That's amazing. So we talked about this before, but I want to update everyone um, because I think before you talked about this and gave a good definition, because a lot of people, I think, get this confused. What's the difference between customer service and customer experience? Okay, so customer service, as per Amanda Gerard, is the baseline, bare minimum of what you have to do to have open doors in a business. So if you are selling coffee, someone walks in, you put the coffee in the cup, and you maybe say good morning, you say thank you, you take their money and they leave. That is customer service, you served a customer. An experience is more, and it requires more forethought, it requires more investment of your attitude into that interaction. But it's about, you know, whenever you take a survey and it says, did your barista attempt to get to know you today? Okay, well, so now now we know that is a part of the formula. Right. We want you to make a personal connection with your guest. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're asking. And because that is an experience. 
So if it's, hi, you off to work this morning? How are you? And you say, you know what? Actually, I have the day off. Oh, that's awesome. Are you going to do anything fun? Yeah, I'm going to go hiking with my buddy. Here you go. Thank you, Jason. Have an awesome hike today. I just made a personal connection right. with you. That is a customer experience as opposed to service. Yeah. That, and so I think that's now it, when we look at experience and we go and we're like, this sounds awesome. How do I get my employees to begin to understand these moments? How do I empower them to do that? Is it as simple as, because we talked before, and I don't want to get into this again, but we talked about culture, mm -hmm. you know, having a culture change. And I know it's got to be more than that because there has to be training. There does. So how do you incorporate these moments? Um, as you say, and I like that. I think I think I'm going to go get the book right after this yes. but and put it on my Kindle and read it. But how do you, how would you train that to create the moment? Well, you have to give them em empowerment. You have to give them trust. And now you have to give them freedom. Hmm. So think about maybe the first time that someone on a Southwest airline flight decided to get a little cheeky with the safety announcement. That had to be okay, right? But right. that's a moment. That's where you started having that's scary. a culture. Because now all of a sudden it's like, you know, as, as corporate could look at that and say, well, we want to make sure that the message is being clear about exactly. safety. I mean, this is like a plane could go down and people are very fearful, but then they decided to look at it the other way and say, if we can make these people feel less intimidated by being on the plane, because right. the odds are 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to be safe. So And break the monotony mm -hmm. because, I mean, we've all heard the safety speech 400 yes. times. We could probably recite it back to them. And knowing that they are still involved enough, that they are mentally present enough to make a joke yes. almost makes me feel more safe. <laughs> but I mean, it, and I think what you just said is so important. It's like break the monotony. How in this process can you break that? You know what I mean? So I used to manage a bar and I knew that we were changing a little bit of our model and I was worried that some of our regulars were going to get lost in this. So what I did is I empowered my bartenders every shift that they were to give away one goodwill drink to say, this oh, is right. on us and right. we appreciate you coming in tonight. And we accounted for that, of course. So that that's being accounted for. Right. It's it's not, you know, where I'm saying, hey, just give away drinks. It was intentional. And they felt respected that they were empowered to do something that made their job better and helped their relationship with their customer. So if you have a coffee shop and you're saying, hey, you know what? Why don't you give away a cup of coffee a week and see how that feels? And let's see what that runs us in, in the cost category. Right. I really promise you that that is not going to be the oh, thing that course. hurts yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, we know the profit margins and stuff like that with, with drinks. If somebody's like, if you have a regular and they're in there and they seem like they're having a down day. Yeah. And you give them a free cup I got of coffee. That. That's on us. Right. Yes. That makes someone feel really great. And so that's what it's about. It, uh, spontaneity is what is the monotony breaker. Right. And to the guest, it's spontaneity. To us, it's planned. But the perception is, wow, something just occurred to me. And and that was a really nice experience. Yeah, and I, and I think um, one of the things that I wanted to kind of dissect, because I kind of want to get like real granular with, um, and I know you can provide a ton of value, but we know like the first point of contact with the company. Mm -hmm. And we're relying on somebody either on the phone or if they're visiting the store. We're, we're paying somebody to f interact with our customers right off the bat. Yes. You know, whether it's receptionist on the phone or whether it's, you know, a product specialist that's sitting there, you know, talking to a customer and going over something like when you walk in the Apple store or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. um, that first point of contact, how would that change from, because like you're saying, customer service to a customer experience, creating a moment. Right. So those are the things that have to be very, very defined. And we talked about that a little bit last time is that we can't leave this to chance. And we know that if we don't put good systems in place and we don't teach people how we want them to to present our company and our message, that they might start to get a little loosey-goosey with it, do some interpretations of what they think is a proper greeting. And that's why in a lot of places you'll get that standardized greeting. Now, did it blow your socks off? Maybe not. But you're like, I'm here and I know that this person is present. They acknowledged me and I'm fine. Now, go one step further than that basic mold of, hi, good morning, welcome to Amanda's coffee shop, what may I get for you? And say like, 
hi, good morning, happy to see you this Tuesday, add your own spin on it, but give them the framework to have consistency and the leniency to make it personal. So how would they, because I'm thinking of a company right now that I was working with, and um, they were wanting to provide gift bags to the customers, Mm -hmm. you know, and right off the bat, um, you know, you know, have, they had like a little, little gifts and stuff like that. And they're kind of, and that sounds amazing. It's like, oh, wow, we're going to just give every person that walks through the door a gift bag. I thought it was great. And it was really interesting is the management and the owners bought off on it Uh and the gift bag set in the back. Really? And you would think that, because I'm, this is a real life experience. You would think that they would, if they're saying hello to somebody that they would want to it, that would be like the easiest ways to give something to somebody right off the bat. Sure. So something had to break down whether, cause all the staff had bought into it, you know, like the, the management staff had bought into it. So there had to be a breakdown there of how it was being delivered. Right. You know, from to, to, you know, those frontline employees. Yeah. And that's something that I, I you know, that, these moments, they're dependent on that frontline employee. They really are. And no matter how much we, we can get, I mean, if you're a business owner right now and you're listening to this, you can be like so excited and you buy this book, but it really comes down to how do you engage or cast that vision to those frontline employees? Cause they're the ones that are doing this. So the, I think the key to that is we can't keep all the secrets in our head. So we might have that big vision and as business owners, we might say, okay, this is how it's going to go. The person's going to walk in. We're going to say, good morning. Welcome to Amanda's Dental Clinic. We're mm-hmm. so pleased that you're here. We'd like to present you with a gift bag. If you don't ever tell anyone that, those gift right. bags are going to sit in the bag. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, maybe know your team. Maybe you don't have someone on your team that would feel comfortable with that. Is that person in the right spot? Is there someone else that you could empower to be the person that delivers the gift bag? Maybe it's a, I mean, my goodness, if it was a dental clinic, I would love to get a gift whenever I sign the bill. Right, yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know this was actually a car dealership. So okay, a car think dealership. Think about that though. When you're coming into a car dealership, everybody hates to do that anyway. They do. Because I have a lot of clients that are car dealerships. And, and I always thought, this is an amazing idea. It you're going to walk in. And you're automatically thinking you're going to meet some cheesy salesperson. Right. And then all of a sudden they're giving you a gift bag. Yes. Like giving to you. And then it's like, why wouldn't those salespeople get involved with that? Right. It's, you would think that would be, it's always a, a, a weird icebreaker anyways. Yes. But I think the routine of doing the same thing over and over and over again, you know, which we know that's the definition of insanity. Yes. But I think maybe there's, I don't know. That's one of the things I was thinking. It's like. How can you get these frontline employees to want to create moments? So what you have to do is you got to break the script. So we all, and Mm, you you just talked about it of whenever you go into a car dealership and you're like, I know this is what's going to happen. I'm going (laughs) to walk in that door. Jason's going to start walking up to me and he's going to size me up. He's thinking, how much money do you make? What kind of car are we going to get you into? All these things that your customer has that almost negative perception of what's I'm about to get taken. And, you know, we got to break the script. So what if there was a no pressure moment? Mm. And, you know, we hear that a lot in, I'm going to use that example, two car dealership commercials where it's like, you know, no pressure. And then you go in and they pressure you. And then it's it's scary. (laughs) It's the same old, same old. Yeah, and people feel intimidated by that. And listen, I, you know, no disrespect to salespeople. I know we got to close those deals. I understand. But what if you broke that script? What if the moment you came in, I said, hi, I'm Amanda. I'm really pleased to be helping you today. I do want to give you this gift just for coming in. And I'd love to get you something to drink while you relax. You're welcome to browse and I'd love to find you later. But can I get you something to drink and make yourselves comfortable? Yeah, see, I think and I think what you just said, and this is kind of what I wanted everybody to hear is the managers were on board, the owners were on board, Mm -hmm. but there wasn't a system or training in place. They provided the bags right. and the bags sit there and it's like, Hey guys, give bags out to yes. all, everybody that comes in. But they didn't, they didn't, if they would have explained to them, Hey guys, let's break the script. Yep. You guys be creative. Let's come up with ways that we can make sure that you personally can give these bags to somebody and be genuine about it. Exactly. Um, you know, or maybe you have people that were so old school and this is dumb. I just want to try to, you know, make lots of money off of people. Right. Well, now you have, as a manager, as an owner, now you have an issue, you know, you have a culture issue. You have a culture among, issue. Yes, yep. exactly. And that takes, that's going to take some effort. But what you have to do, this is you as a leader, you've got to impart, why are we doing this? And I really believe that most of your team just wants to know why. 
what are we getting into and what is the purpose of it? And so you tell them it's about building that connection. Understand that you guys have potential beyond this sale. So whether that person comes in today and they buy nothing, they might come back tomorrow. If they Mm -hmm. buy something today, they probably have a spouse, they have kids, they have family members. I mean, it's that that old rule of give someone an amazing experience and they're probably going to tell a couple people, give them a bad experience, they'll tell at least 10. So keep that in mind. And that's why we've got to go out of our way. That's what it's about. It's about that moments don't just happen, we make them. So it's uncomfortable and it feels silly sometimes, but you got to do it. And if you can't believe in that, evaluate Do my team members believe in my culture? Do I have the right team? What am I doing as a leader that is inspiring this culture where they don't think it's phony? Because I believe that most of the time when Mm, you can't get people on board, it's because they think you're full of baloney. Yeah, like you went, the owner goes to the next conference and gets all pumped and then we're going to implement this system. Yes. You know, and then that lasts for a month or two and then you know, it goes on to the same old, same old. Exactly. We all get that high of new information. (laughs) We're so jazzed to go and take on the world. But it's hard. Sustainable change, delivering day in and day out, the commitment that it takes to be exceptional is challenging. Now, you have to ask yourself, do I want to just sign checks and pay the bills or do I want to be exceptional? And if the answer is that you just want to sign checks and pay the bills, there are many, many ways that you can do that. If you want to be exceptional, you're going to have to work. And it's not always going to be easy. Yeah. And I, 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 I really like this moment because I think that is more tangible. Yes. You know, because we talk about CX and then we have all these you know, like KPIs that we look at and we're sending out surveys and emails to customers, but it comes down to that. It does. Like, I mean, and in reality, with the studies that are out there, um, eight to 10% of customers are saying they're getting a good to great experience. So majority of businesses that are out there, I mean, I hate to be frank, but you're not doing what you think you're doing. Right. Exactly. And that, you know, that gap is where you maybe need some outside eyes. Not a bad time to bring a consultant in, ask a friend, hey, if you can't afford to hire a company, I promise you have a friend, let them secret shop you. Let them tell you about the experience from a really organic place. Don't tell anyone this is a bad, bad mistake. Don't tell everyone to be on their best behavior because a company is coming in to do an assessment or that you're going to have secret shoppers. Everybody be on your game. Just see where you're at. Be okay, be humble, and understand that that's a baseline that we can get better from. But you have to know what that experience is. But, I, but and you know this, being an expert in this field, customer experiences are going faster than how companies are evolving or changing. Yep, they sure are. So how do you stay up with those trends? Well, have has the actual fundamental of it change that much? No, we just have more avenues to deliver it. So it's an opportunity. It's not a big, scary challenge that we're not going to be able to overcome. It's that now we have so many ways to reach people, Mm. you know, and it is about embrace the things that have always been. So let's go back to our car example, right? What if you bring your son in and you, you happen to mention, yeah, we're, we're in here, we're shopping for his first car, you know? Right. Okay. They just gave you gold. What are you going to do with it? Right. You, ha- you have an opportunity to create a moment. Amazing moment, right. right? Now, imagine that you don't just leave that up to Amanda, the car salesperson. You have a company culture that empowers Amanda to do something to commemorate a moment. Mm. So yes, he's getting a car. Huge moment. You probably, that's already a moment, right? Well, that happens so often in our businesses. People are already having moments Jump in there, capitalize on it, be a part of it. I mean, giving this kid a special gift saying like, wow, amazing. Congratulations on your first car. Whatever that is, put him on your Instagram. Mm. He got his first car. That's amazing. I love that. That's a moment. So how can we look around and see what's already happening and just use it? And, you know, I mean, you were talking about leadership earlier, because I think that's the first step is creating like a customer centered vision. You know, like when you look at leadership and I know when when you look at this book and you had talked about the E-Myth book, which I've talked about several times. And that's funny that you brought that up because like as a leader or as, as a business owner, a CEO that's sitting out there, how, how do you create the vision? Well, 
the vision is the big, big idea. So right. the vision, I think most of our people um, that listen to this podcast, probably super entrepreneurial, and they know the vision. They're like, I know what I want it to look like. Right. It's drilling that down into execution where I think the big disconnect is. And that's where you and I, I think, both really lean on something like the e-myth, which is saying that it's the systems that you don't have that will hurt you. Mm -hmm. So you've got to look at every time you're opening a business, look at it like you're opening a franchise. You're going to sell this to a, a, you know 50 other people and you want someone to have the same experience every time. Your business cannot be contingent upon you being there. There has to be such firm systems in place that that thing can run because your team knows what to do. They won't know what to do inherently, so it is up to you to develop that plan. So take your vision. You know what you want it to look like. Right. When someone comes in the door, this is what they hear. This is what they see. This is what they experience. Well, don't keep that locked in your head. Tell your team. Yeah, and I, I know like Zappos has that. I read that book on on them with customer experience, and they have that, you know, they train everybody to be humble. Yes. That's like their big thing. And then I think it's like develop a wow, which is like a yeah. moment. You know. Give them a wow moment. I used to I used to work for Darden and one of their uh one of their taglines or the things that they wanted their team to remember is what are we here to do today? 100% guest delight. We're not here to serve. We are not here to, you know, make someone have an okay pasta experience. We're here to provide 100% guest delight. That's a huge mission, but it's a wow moment. It's right, like Zappos right. of saying, give them a wow. So they have to, so if there's somebody out there and their system, they want to have customer experience but they haven't changed any of their systems. Right. Like we'll get back to the car dealership. They, they are pressuring salespeople, you know, to produce, produce, produce. Yes. And they're training the same way that they've always trained. Right. On, on the sales side of things. And then they want to add this customer experience. It may kind of, kind of may seem like a bother or yes. you're just adding something to a system. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. Yeah, well, I think it can feel very disingenuous, too, mm -hmm. when the whole rest of the experience is incredibly, you know, you know this. It's the script, right? right. I know this. I've already been here. I've right. seen this happen. And then you're like, but I'm going to throw in a ta-da at the end. <laughs> right. And people are going, I don't get it. I don't understand why you yeah, just it's did almost that. Like, it's almost like really... Inauthentic. Um, yes, yeah, and awkward. <laughs> yes. You know, like, I would be like... Okay, you were kind of mean to me through this whole process yes. and shoved me through this little funnel. Right. And then at the end, you're going to try to make it all good. Right. You know, it's almost like a dysfunctional relationship where they yell at you. You know, you got somebody and they're yelling at you being abusive or whatever. And then at the end, they want to like take you out to dinner. But you're or so whatever. pretty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're so, it's yeah. So, I watched This is crazy. So but I, I think it was on A&E or whatever. I watched. It was about. Um, we're going way off script here. But it was about in Vegas, like. Uh, pimps and prostitutes. Uh -huh. And then it was like how pimps mentally mess up these women. It was horrific, actually, you know, but like they have to treat them really bad one night. And then the next night they go buy them something amazing, you know, and they yeah. get them in this big drama abusive circle. Abusive cycle. Yeah, abusive right. cycle. And that sounds, I don't know, that's extreme, but it's almost the same way that we're dealing with customers. Yeah. Um, and I've watched it play out like over and over again. It's like, okay, this person's in a good mood today. So the experience changes dramatically. Yes. But how do you make, how do you take that vision and then make it consistent? Well, and, and then that's especially challenging for some of our businesses where maybe your business has an ick factor or mm -hmm. something unappealing right. about it. But it's a your lawyer's business. office. Or yes, something. yes. A dentist's office, buying a car. Yeah, sorry, yeah, car. Exactly, yeah. But yeah, no, that it, is. Yeah. It's tough. You know, people, you've already got people on the defensive. Mm -hmm. They've got something maybe fear inspiring about to happen to them. And what we need to do is be able to remove that stigma or lessen it, right? So if we can at least get that service line to uneventful almost, mm. you know, where there's no big pit, um, we, we want to always strive for the peak. But if your business is such that it's a little bit more challenging, let's at least not get ourselves in a pit. Right. So bring that experience up to a relatively pleasant level. Then you have that opportunity to wow a little bit more, to add the moment, to give them something that is uh, positive to take away. Yeah, but away. I think there's people that have these old archaic systems in place. Arch just ran, you know, basically just trying to hurry up and serve a customer and get yes. the next one. That they have horrific systems. And like you said, they just bring them, need to bring them up to pleasant. Right. You can't go from horrific and then add at the end. I love that you said that because you can't go from horrific and then add at the end a oh, wow. Yeah. It's weird. 
It's disconnected. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make any sense. So if your whole system is broken, is broken, I find that the trouble that usually follows that is that leadership is unwilling or has a little bit of blinders on that they don't want to completely crash that system down and put it back together. Mm. And it's really hard. It really is. But if you can be honest with yourself and say something that I'm doing isn't working, and maybe it's not your forte. I mean, what if you're amazing at analytics? What if you're great at accounting or inventory management, but front of the house is not exactly your strong suit? Like I said, don't be the smartest person in the room. Get somebody who is really all about that and let them evaluate the system. Be open to that feedback and understand that if we're going to break it down, it's got to come all the way down most of the time. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think you have to like necessarily um, hire somebody else. It's just a matter of getting, I mean, you can hire a consultant or somebody like that. Um, but the cost is going to be you need somebody to come in and be honest. Yes. Whether it's a family member or whether it's a really close friend and you're telling them like, sit in my, let me pay you for a day to sit in my business. Exactly. And just give me, I've done yeah. that before where, you know, where I've, I've, you know, hired uh, teenagers to break yep. down a website mm -hmm. and you can get five teenagers and have them say, be totally honest and brutal with me. I'll give you guys $20 gift cards. Yep. You know, we're pumping Starbucks today or whatever, but <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll give you, and I want you guys to just, what is horrific about this website? Right. And it's amazing what 14, 15, 16 year olds can do um, to something like that. So a friend, a family member, it doesn't have to be, you know, hire a $5,000 consultant. That's to come so in. true because even one step closer to free right. that people want to give you, I promise, is feedback. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Put feedback loops into your business and listen to them. Right. Now here's a, trouble that we get into with feedback is feedback becomes the complaint hotline. And that's not that's not the way we want to use feedback to fix a system. Mm. So when you've got feedback coming in on a relatively, I have feedback coming in on a constant basis from many, many different avenues. And it is one of the most important tools of my job. Um, when I see something that says, hey, this product is really bad or I had a terrible experience, that's like a fire. But what I don't want to do is alert the the fire truck to run out and put it put it out because then I've got all of our team, all of our oh, leadership right. running over there to fix something. Meanwhile, another one of those is going to pop up. So uh, what this can be referred to is paving the potholes. And we got to stop doing that. Right. So there, things are going to come up. You're going to have some disappointing experiences. You're going to have a bad day with product or, you know, something's going to happen. But there's a lot of uh, research that says if you have people that are giving you maybe like a fair rating, like I had a fair to decent experience with your company. And then you've got people that said I had a good but not quite great experience. Right. You're going to be better ROI if you push the people from good to great than the people from fair to good or not so good to fair. Well, I think this is important because a lot of business owners that are out there have tried the customer experience and all they felt like they were doing is taking, like you said, a ton of resources and putting out fires constantly yep. Yep. and then trying to, they're spending a ton of money trying to make that person happy. Right. Where that should just be an indication that you need to improve your systems. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say as well, is all of the things, the people who are in the the not so good to fair zone, those are systematic problems, right? So those are things we need to address, but they need to be addressed on a broad scale, not running to put out fires, not paving potholes. That's a system situation. The people who are closer to having that amazing experience, those are the people where you want to really, really invest resources. That's where you turn it up because those people will end up spending nine times more mm. than the folks on the other end of the spectrum. So you need to, if you're providing a service where you really just have to be out there for everyone, then yes, work on your systems, get everyone up to that fair to good zone. If you are more of a niche business, understand that not everybody's your customer. And you did a recent podcast on know your audience, right? Right. Right. So again, if you're addressing that 25 to 40 year old rural mom, where are you at? Who are you talking to? And the fact of the matter is, is that maybe just not everyone is your customer. That's okay. I, and I, I, but I, I feel like that was the reason I did that podcast because I feel like, and you could testify to this because you, you look at the research all the time. 
I think there's a lot of business owners that don't even know who they're catering to. Ooh, yeah, the, that's definitely square one. So we got to <laughs> figure that out. They don't. They um, never build a customer persona, or... right? And and that's what is your product? That's a good question to right. ask, right? What do we do and what are we selling? Um, and then figure out who does this appeal to. And mm-hmm. there is tons of demographic research. You do not need to go out there with an analytics team and recreate the, no, the right, wheel. Exactly. Understand. Let's sell. Let's say you sell bike tires. That I promise you, there is already information out there that is published information that will tell you who buys bike tires in the United States of America. Right? Yeah. I mean, o- odds are they go to Whole Foods. Yep, I mean, yep. I can just do this already. Right. REI. <laughs> yes. You know, the list goes on and on. Probably lean more liberal. Probably. You yeah. Know, I mean, and then now you know to do now you. So you want to be on Twitter, right? right. That's yeah. where you're going. And, and marketing, and it, it's such a. I see that when I go into businesses and talk with business owners and leaders. I see that all the time. It's like, you know, it's basically, well, whoever comes to the door, you know, that's, we want to give the best experience, right. but you have to know who's coming through the door. Right. You got to know that customer. Sure. Because how are you going to create a moment if you don't know that? Like that yellow kind of more ugly, uh, a Four Seasons um, loyal customer is not, probably not going to go to that hotel. Probably not the same customer. Probably not the same customer, but you took somebody that was looking for an average hotel. Right. They were expecting average. They looked They looked at the pictures exactly. online. They knew it's kind of like an eclectic type of hotel. You know, that's a different person. That's probably middle class, upper middle class person. Yeah. Where that person at the Four Seasons, yeah, they're expecting, you know, their bed to be turned two or right. three times, mints to be on their pillow. You're not going to get that. Now you may... Once that hotel becomes cool right. and it's in this book, you may say somebody, oh, we'll drop down and go visit. But if you're trying to cater to, you know, uh, the elite or the super upper middle, you know, I mean, super upper class people, uh-huh. that 1%, that hotel would fail. Exactly. And I think that's what you're talking about. Right. It's not, that's not your audience. Right. But what they did that's brilliant, this is something that you take away and put it into your business right now, is they said, who are we serving? Great. How can we be competitive against other similar properties? Mm. But maybe we don't have a ton of capital to invest. So we're, we cannot go in here and buy $400,000 worth of new furniture. We're not right. in that position right now. But what can we add to our experience that will set us apart from a Super 8 or a Motel 6 or something that could have been, right. you know, even like a courtyard, let's say, that was right. comparable. And they said, what are we going to do to make ourselves stand out? And that's why those moments are so special and why they became defining to their guest is mm, because they sense. didn't expect them. That has never happened to them before. It totally broke the script. And they said, wow, I can't believe this and that makes people give you that almost um you can't even buy word of mouth right so right. when people start saying oh my gosh stayed at this hotel it was amazing they brought the popsicles out they did our laundry we've never had such a good time well now even if i'm a four seasons guest i'm like that sounds kind of cool i, I might want to try that now you're pulling from other markets but start in your zone and make it outstanding yeah and i think a lot of people complain about there, there are people on the front line, and this is something that I, I think that is important, is they don't realize that 50% of people buy on emotion. Exactly. So, and that everybody's a salesperson yes. in the organization. So they not you don't have to teach them sales, per se. Mm-mm. You know, it's creating that emotion, yeah. th- that moment. Right. And those are that's part of a system, right? So it doesn't seem like a system to your customer. But if part of your system is that from the person who is sweeping the floor to the person that takes the order or whatever that may be, that they always say, like, how is your day going? You know, mm-hmm. how are you today? Then that person's like, wow, man, people really care around here. Right. So it's not something so overt that it feels like a script that's been rehearsed and rehearsed. But you tell them, I want you to get to know our guest. And a really simple way to do that if you don't feel comfortable is how is your day? Right. Yeah, so another, another company and a big one um, – it's a big food management company called Sedex. So they, they started by taking something away and that helped give the freedom to their associates to spread a good message. But it also, um, it wasn't a script, so it felt much more authentic. So they just implemented this little tagline into their business that said, no more next. So when you're standing in a line 
and it was oh, time right, for the right. next guest. They got so sick of someone going next, right. next, that all they said was no more next. I don't care what you say, but please don't say next. So then you found, you know, your associates being able to do some really great things of may I help them? May I help a new guest or, you know, whatever that may be. They right, were having a like, better interaction. Okay, I'm done with you. Here's, yes. Here's the next problem that I have. Right. Yeah. That, so. That's kind of like, and then hurry up. Right. How can we hurry up with you? Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, so either you're looking to implement something because as we, you and I spoke about last time, it's not enough to be loose with it. If you say, I want you to treat everyone that walks in this door how you would treat your mother, you have no idea what that looks like. So define it. The way that Jason treats his mom or I treat my mom or Joe Blow on the street, it doesn't, it's, it's not the same thing. So don't think that something like the golden rule is going to save you. You really need to put a system in place of how you want that interaction to look like. Yeah, I went into a, a pretty popular restaurant bar um, here in Albuquerque um, the other day and I, I was meeting with a manufacturer and um, we walk in the door and the bartender yells, it's open seating, seat yourself. Ugh. But, you know, it would have been like, all you would have needed is a sign. Yeah. Like a very clear sign. Right. But the problem is she'd probably said that a hundred times. Yes. So after a while, she was just like, here comes another person walking around. I got to say this again. Right. You know, so that was the first introduction. Luckily, the product is great. Right. You know, and the ambiance is great. Yep. So I'll go back there, you know, but those are like a, a systems issue, like uh, how easy it would be to put a clear sign up right? that could be taken down maybe at dinner time, but for lunch. Or, they know, or just, yeah. you know, hi, anywhere you like. Yeah. Like, I mean, just. Yeah, how easy would the wording change? <laughs> right. Yeah. But yeah, because it was that. And and she's busy. It's lunchtime. Sure. Making drinks yep. and having to man the whole bar. And she has um, waiters and waitresses coming to her asking for drinks. Right. So it's an inconvenience for her. It is. And you don't have to hire somebody else. A sign or like you said, her changing her word track yes. to the customer could, you know, fix that problem right. so easily. And it's, you know, it's you and I were speaking a bit before about, you know, another system where the employee was taking on so much more to do, so much more work that then we're starting to wonder, well, why aren't they doing a good job? Mm. Well, if she's so busy that she, or desensitized to that scenario that it's like, hey, wherever, you know, sit wherever you want or open seating, whatever that dialect was, then we know that she's she's got enough on her plate. So like you said, let's empower her in some way. How can we do this? Can we get her a sign? Can we make it a fun thing? You right. know, can we put some wayfinding that's like kind of cheeky or fun that you're like, oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I never would have thought that that's how you would tell someone to find their yeah, seat. Yeah, and it was interesting because she gave excellent customer service. I right. mean, like I, we had a couple beers and the minute that it was getting kind of low, yes. she was, I mean, she was on it, you know, yeah. so you can't fault her for that. But the way her voice came off, and we had to sit at the bar because it was busy. Sure. So we sat at the bar. So she was attending us, you know, which, so you're kind of like sitting there like, is well, she going to be nice to me, you know? Yeah. And I think that comes from, you just stacked that one more piece of straw on the camel's back of kind of, um, I don't want to say things that are not my job, but if she's really in the realm of like, I want to give great service. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that you're always refilled. I want to make sure that I bring your check in a timely fashion. And someone says, hey, oh, by the way, Amanda, will you also tell people to just seat themselves because we don't have a hostess today? And you're like, ah, that's one more thing that now I have to manage or I'm not used to. Right. And if and if someone literally said, just tell people when they come in to seat themselves, this happens all the time. I could say that as a manager to an employee. And so when someone walks in the door and they say, hey, seat yourself, I did that. Right. I did not exactly. give that person the system that I wanted them to follow. Yeah, empower the customer to say, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. You know, yeah. The customers are saying, or say if you see somebody at the door, you can tell them. Uh, but I, I, I read this in this study, and this was really interesting. They said, um, a business that optimizes for an emotional connection outperforms competitors by 85% in sales growth. It's so Think true. Think about that, 85% in sales growth. Yes, everyone so get ROI out a calculator, see there. what that yeah. does for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. I mean, even if, if Jason and I are throwing out some figures, nine times more, 85% growth, I, I mean, get out your calculator and understand what 20% looks to you. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to make 20% more money by just right. being personal? I am. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it doesn't, it doesn't cost you the, the cost is the study also said emotionally engaged customers are three times more likely to recommend your product or service, Yep. three times more likely to repurchase, 
less likely to shop around. 44% said they never shopped around right. once they had a great experience. And then they're much less price sensitive. So it's like wins all the way around. Right. And that was another thing, you know, that you and I talked about last time I was here with you was that they're not, they're not upset by the expense. They're upset by the lack of value. So infuse the value into your product. Give them that personal experience. How many of us have an airline that we fly no matter what? Right. Right. With loyalty miles and all yeah, that. Yeah. But also it's because we're to us, however we're doing it, that airline is the least drama. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Or someone at some point during some unpleasant experience showed us humanity and we felt personally connected and we're like, or that's like good her, enough. Or like her, it's where I can just go grab a car. Yeah. I don't even have to talk to anybody. Right. So they just made it convenient for me too. And I think that's another part of customer experience. It doesn't have to be a human to human touch. That's there can true. be barriers. Yes. And I think a lot of that's where maybe some of our um, you know, more seasoned business owners are like, well, you know, that human interaction is going away. And so there's no way to make it personal. But you know what's really personal to our customer nowadays? Ease convenience, right, right. speed of service. People have stuff to do. We got to get them in and out. That's the number one complaint. They were talking about in the study. That's the number one complaint. It's the time it takes. Yes. A uh, long wait response times. Exactly. Or I mean, if you're at a restaurant, the number one thing that will blow an experience for people, you know what it is? Taking too long to pay their check. Mm. When people are done, they would like to leave. They do not right. want to live with us. Well, I know like Chili's and stuff like that has a little machines, you know? That's I why. I was went there somewhere and I used it the other day because yeah. I was like, I don't, I can do this part. I put the little card in there, slide it in there, put my tip on there. Right. I, I'm ready to go. Thank you very much. You know? And we're all so comfortable with it now. Right. You know, that it's, it's kind of funny sometimes we see ourselves in an experience such as a grocery store where we're swiping our card, we put in right. the pin, we know how to do this. We can cash out. We do it every day. Right. So it took so long though for the restaurant industry to go, wait a minute, they already know how to do this. And it's so funny. I was at Nordstrom Rack here and they had kind of a long line. So the, they each uh, customer service representative has, um, they can check you out on a little oh, phone yeah. with uh -huh. the little slide on the card. And I'm like, that's brilliant. You know, wh yep. wherever I'm at, I could be like, okay, I'm done in the men's shop. I bought two shirts. Okay, I'm out. And then yep. they put it in a bag and away they, you go. You know, and I thought, what empowerment for somebody that is putting shirts on shelves to be able to check me out too. How much, that's not that much more training. No, it's not because the it's infusing that ease, that access, that, you know, get in, get out kind of mentality. You have to do that if you're brick and mortar because so many people now are going to online shopping right. that you're sort of being phased out unless somebody needs something right now, then right. they might order it online. Yeah. I was talking to, um, I'm going to have him on the podcast. Uh, he's a business owner here locally. And he created an app showing customer all the benefits that they give. Like, you oh, know, nice. and then he, uh, in the app, it showed, um, like, if you ordered a pair of skis, like what his salespeople would do right off the bat is they'd say, let's find the cheapest price online. Oh, nice. And so here's, you know, here's REI, here's Amazon, here's, and they would try to find the, and then they would turn around and say, you know, well, you got to get bindings for the skis. Mm -hmm. That's going to cost you this much. Well, we provide that service for you. You know, when you purchase skis exactly. from us and then from there we do free waxings, we do tune ups, all this stuff. So he, and then he articulated in the app how much the value it is Perfect. of that. You know, he says, I can't sell you those for $500 on my price is 700, but I'm giving you over $200 of value exactly. by being local. And here's all the services I provide extra. Right. And I don't think a lot of people understand or can articulate to the customer just by, you can create a wow off of that. Absolutely. By showing the service that you give. Yeah. I mean, like throw a throw a word in there that makes people feel excited, that makes them feel like, wow, what an amazing service. You know, if that's we have concierge maintenance for, mm -hmm. you know, five years or whatever mm -hmm. that whatever that is to you that you think your customer would be like, Wow, cool. I love that language. Right, exactly. Um, but I'm really excited to hear about that because when I talk to business owners from time to time, I could be having that exact same conversation and I, it would be with arms thrown up going, they just want to buy on Amazon. They don't, you know, they don't even consider the fact that we do two years of free fittings and bindings and blah, 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 blah. And you're like, yeah, but do they know that? No, the customer, that's what he was finding out. They don't out. know it. He actually more than doubled his sales by doing this. Yes. And he's like growing and expanded and, and, bought more for his shop and all that. So really interesting. Um, and he went to the city 
and turned around and said, um, can I get, you know, like, because tax revenue goes to the city uh-huh. if you purchase locally. Right. You know, now they made this law, but I think it just goes to the state if you buy things from Amazon. But it actually helps the city if you buy local. So the city's like, well, can we give away like free golf? Mm-hmm. So now we can give these tangibles to the customer by buying local. Right. And create more like ski lift tickets or whatever that creates more of an experience, you know. And we have a VIP um, email subscription model, you know, where you can turn around and, and we're going to give you exclusive times that, you know, we're at the ski lifts. It's going to be an hour early only for yes, our customers. Yes. So it's like these elusive things that you get, you know, right. by just being creative. It's amazing how you can change the perspective of what a customer, because the online thing I think is, and I don't want to get into that with you, but the online thing I think is a scary. It the is. The brick and mortars, yeah. Sure. But the the opportunity that you have as an actual business or even just a local business, even if you don't have a storefront, but you're here, you're physically here, right. is that you have the ability to give them a very personal VIP experience. And right. that's all the things that you're defining right now is how do I make this person? That's the reason that was made up a very important person. Mm-hmm. And uh, isn't that what we all want to feel when we're spending our hard earned money? We want to feel like you care. Right, that that I'm getting a good deal. How can you show that? What does the deal mean? You right. know, if I'm if you're giving me a ton of value, like he talked about bikes, you know, it's going to come in a box. Yep. So you just bought a two thousand dollar bike. Some of these mountain bikes can be you know ten grand. Yes. But you just bought a two thousand dollar bike, and it, yeah, you got it really cheap, but it came in a box. Do you have somebody that's professional that's been working on bikes for ten or fifteen years? Right. That know how to do everything. You're going to have to come to me, and I'm going to charge you one hundred twenty dollars to do that anyways. Yep. You know, so whereas it's included if you just buy it, right? Through us. And then it's tune-ups every year are included, yep. and and a lot of people don't understand that and realize that when they're looking, it's more than just buying local. It is, you know, and then amount that he was giving to, he, he was giving to not for profits, right? So he put that in the app. He's like, you know, we, every time you buy this, we're going to give twenty dollars to. That is so smart. I'm, you know, this is awesome. I definitely applaud this person because right. the mistake that most of our business owners, when you really have conversations with them. And you just are like, wow, you are amazing. Right. You offer this incredible value and look at what you're providing to the community. And then you go, well, then what's the breakdown here? Why are people not patronizing these establishments? And the the thing that we all need to remember is don't be the best kept secret. Oh, yes. You don't course. do that to yourself. Right. If you're doing good things, write a press release, put it on Facebook, Mm -hmm. you know, make people aware of it. And not because it's boastful, but because you are participating in this community and this community deserves to know who is supporting it and, and be engaged with those businesses because the consumer does care where their dollar goes. Yeah, I think that's good. And we, we've gone over an hour, but I want to kind of close with this. And if you could, um, cause I wanted to get into this customer feedback and employee feedback. Can you talk a little bit about that? I, sure. I know that's one of your things that you do yes. at UNM a Love lot. Love feedback. But. Um, so customer feedback. I'll, I'll be as succinct as possible. Like I said, you cannot go down every rabbit hole and change your entire operation based on one piece of feedback. But it is your responsibility to collect data and understand the trends. If everybody says that you have the weirdest mustard, or you know, I'm using food right. a lot as an example, but... If that's coming up over and over and over again and throughout a span of time, it's not like a, if it's a flash, then you have an immediate need and you need to go and address that problem. If it's a trend, you have a systemic issue that you oh, need to get into. This is my into. grandma's recipe for mustard. We've always had this mustard. I don't care what people say. You know, I've well, heard stuff like that. Then, excellent. But Be willing to lose that customer. That's <laughs> yes. it. Seriously. That's then that customer happen. doesn't matter to you and you're only interested in the funky mustard crowd. And I guarantee crowd. you that... Attitude that you have is what your employees are displaying to customers. It is. It is. It's like it or leave it. Right. You know, yes. we don't need you. And mm. if if you have the luxury of doing that, good for you. I do not. And I don't think that many of our business owners do. Um, we really have to be receptive to those things. Now, when it comes to your employees, that feedback is so critical. And it does require you to put your ego down. You've got to not be on the defensive, be open, listen to what they're saying. And that is the most valuable thing. If you go to the person that is interacting with your customer first and foremost, and they say, wow, everybody that comes in here is super angry and they trip on that thing a lot. Well, okay, that person just gave you a huge valuable piece of information Mm -hmm. that you as the CEO may have never known. That step is too high. 
That's a problem. And people are coming in here annoyed because they always stub their toe. Little things, the little things. Now, when it gets back up into management style, if someone says, I just don't feel the energy coming from my manager. I don't feel like they care about our Mm. guest. And so I feel stupid caring about our guest. That's a problem. Then you need to either remove yourself If you can't feel that energy, then you don't need to be the person interacting with the front lines folks. You need someone who is energized about that customer experience. Or you maybe need some time. You need to go get reinvigorated yourself and get out of the minutia, get out of the line items for a second and understand the vision of why you're here. And those are the things that our our employees can tell us. They can pull us up out of the weeds enough to see wow, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And I really need to work on this in myself or I need to be receptive to the person who is in my business probably more than you are and say they have a great point. Something I love doing is is taking every single one of my employees out to lunch. Yeah. And then just getting them away from the office and getting them out and then asking them questions and listening. Yeah. It's amazing if they feel they can be honest with you, which I always encourage that and they're not going to be totally honest, you know, most of the time, but it's amazing by just how much did that lunch cost me? 40, 50 bucks. Right. You know, if we have drinks or something, you know, we're not supposed to cause you know, yeah. but I mean, 70 bucks, 80 bucks, but do you know how much feedback I get? Tons. It is. Yeah. It is amazing. And I encourage you, if you're a business owner, a CEO, pick somebody that is, you know, cleans the carpets, you know, a janitor mm-hmm. and take them out. Yeah. You know, take everyone out from every different aspect of your organization because you're going to hear, like you said, a janitor may tell you somebody's tripping over this constantly, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's the first introduction they get when they walk in is feeling awkward because they just accidentally tripped over somebody and then having people look at them. Right. You know, so, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, employee to me, understanding what your employees are thinking would probably be I, I don't I don't know. I mean, it's a flip side, 50-50, but I, I would want to know how my employees are thinking and where they're at because I know it's going to translate organically to the customer. Well, and they're going to tell you about the customer because they're going to see that they're actually much better than a survey. Surveys, we're super lucky if we can get, you know, a 10% return on a survey, right? Mm-hmm. So, but your customer who interacts with every single person um, and it's not optional they're going to say, listen, everybody's complaining about this or people love that thing, but we're always sold out of it. That's really valuable information. That's better than a survey. Listen to them. Don't blow them off because they're hourly or whatever that may be. They are a wealth of information and then engage them and empower them. And if you can sit down with your employees, amazing. And I definitely applaud you for doing that. But if you can ask them like, what is the best part of your job? What's the most challenging part of your job? What can I do for you? Mm, yeah, that's so good. Get into it. and right, coaching. Yeah. yeah. And if they say, you know what? The thing that you could do for me is I would love to, you know, be in charge of inventory because I really am understanding what's selling out by working the cash register. You know, that person is primed for growth. If another person tells you, you know what? I wish you would meet with us more because I don't understand what the vision is. Right. You know, then, okay, great. I can do that. And it's my responsibility as a leader. Yeah, I've had somebody just change where their point of sale system was at with the counters and stuff like that. You know, like employees came and said, we'd love to do this to interact with the customer more, not feel like there's a distance. And then that just start, that little change just, you know, catapult something into I hear it every day on the minutia level and I appreciate it because I cannot be everywhere. We can't Mm, be everywhere. And someone will say, hey, Amanda, um, I love this sign you guys have, but nobody is looking at it. I think maybe we should move it to this area on the counter. Incredibly valuable information. Does not hurt my feelings at all. Please put the sign where people will see it because I need them to see it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And and I don't think people, because you're just like, oh, we got a sign. Let's put it up. Yeah. Stick it somewhere. You know, yeah, yeah. Let's put it someplace. And then somebody takes, that's important to them. Yeah. And I think another thing that you see, even when you're paying attention to details like that, somebody gives you feedback and then you act on that feedback and you thank them in front of others, Mm -hmm. then it makes them feel super valuable and like they have ownership in the company. Yes. Tell them, tell them that's an amazing idea. 
follow up with them. Let them know, Jason, I appreciate your feedback. And it was such a good idea and such an insightful comment. We have implemented it. And then put a little sign next to whatever you're doing or on your website that says, you know, like customer suggestion or, you know, like based on your feedback, this is what you asked for. Like really let your guests know that you're listening and that you're implementing on their behalf when it makes sense. And not everything does. But, you know, sometimes when you have that opportunity, really make it known. Yeah. And I think you can, it's free to start with your employees. Totally. Or hardly any cost. So start with your employees before you start creating all these. Because a lot of people want to hop online and get these, you know, companies that will go out there and send surveys out or, yeah. you know, send email blast out, you know, with, you know, feedback and all that. I mean, those are great to do. But, you can start with your employees first. You can. And even in small ways, have a stand up with them. If mm. you if your team is physically there and you're there, have a 10 minute stand up and say, this is what we're doing today. This is the bigger purpose of what we're doing this for. This is the thought that I want to keep. I want you to keep in mind. I know a lot of people that will send around a quote or something, you know, a, mm-hmm. a company mantra to inspire everyone to be on point that day. No, that's so awesome. Well, thank you once again. Um, so fun. The last, the last one I had was amazing and got so many nuggets out of it, gold nuggets. But this time was absolutely blown away. What's the book again? And then I want to get where people can follow you. Okay, so we've got the Power of Moments, and that one is by Chip and Dan Heath. And then the other one that Jason and I talked about a little bit, and he has talked about a lot before, is the E Myth. Um, that's by Michael Gerber. So definitely pick those two up. Not Gerard. Not Gerard. (laughs) No, my book's not out. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Well, awesome. Thank you, Amanda. I really appreciate this. It's uh, basically part two. Yeah. We did part one like six months ago, eight months ago, something like that. Yeah, February. Yeah, Yeah, February. So we did part one. So I want you guys to go back and listen to that. Um, You're going to hear how great she was and how horrible I was as an interviewer. Because I only had a few in me, I think, at that time. But not drinks. No, <laughs> that oh, what? Well, and that was my first podcast. I think we did pretty good. I'm proud of us. No, you did amazing. Yeah, because <laughs> I I listened. I've listened to it twice, and I was just like, wow. You know, I mean, just the amount of information you have on this subject is amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, so I'll have to have you maybe in the next eight months. We'll have you back. Yeah, again. definitely. That would be awesome. Now that we're both getting more and more more seasoned. Here we go. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks, Amanda. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. <laughs> to our sponsor, RigbyDigital.com. Make sure to subscribe and share and go to ABQPodcast.com. Get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner.